Suppose you're drinking lemon juice using a straw and a seed gets stuck in the straw. What happens then? You will not be able to drink the lemon juice because there is a block. Now I want you to imagine that this straw is your blood vessel and the seed is the clot and you are the organ. Now what happens over time is these clots they cause injury to the blood vessels and these blood vessels form plaques. This is called as atherosclerosis. These plaques can get dislodged and they break off again causing our body to form a clot there. So this process goes on and on and this formation of clot buildup leads to a block or an obstacle to the path of blood flow to that particular organ. If the clot gets stuck in the blood vessel to your heart, it causes a heart attack. If this clot gets stuck in a blood vessel to your brain, it causes a stroke. The reason why it's important to get up and move around every few hours is to avoid developing clots in our legs. This is called as deep vein thrombosis or DVT. These clots can move and get into our lungs or heart or brain and it's fatal. Smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and diabetes are the risk factors for atherosclerosis. Now you may wonder what are clots made of? They're made of cholesterol, fibrous tissue and inflammatory cells. So isn't there a way to prevent new clots? Warfarin and warfarin. These are two drugs which we'll be talking about in this video. These drugs are anticoagulants. I want you guys to remember that anticoagulants do not dissolve clots. Instead, what they do is they prevent the growth of existing clots and they prevent the formation of new clots. First, we'll talk about heparin. Now, let's imagine heparin to be a strong lady who eats healthy food. She doesn't eat any fried fatty food. Strong lady should help you remember that heparin is the strongest acid. And no fatty fried food will help you remember that heparin is not lipophilic. Lipo meaning fat. So this lady heparin, she will go and help if someone needs help. And she will run quickly to their help. So heparin helps fast. But once she helps, she leaves the place as soon as possible. She leaves soon. This will help you remember that heparin has a rapid onset of action, but it doesn't stay in the body for a long time. Now let's split the word heparin. Do you see the word P-A-R, par? So that will help you remember parental. This is given parentally. And the I-N in heparin will help you remember that it is highly ionic. It is an indirect inhibitor of thrombin, which is the clot, inhibitor of thrombin. It prevents thrombin or clot. And heparin acts on the intrinsic pathway. We did talk about heparin being healthy, right? So she takes her protein supplements regularly. This should help you remember that the antidote for heparin is protamine sulfate. Protein supplements, protamine sulfate. How does this heparin work? What is the mechanism of action? It activates antithrombin 3. Now what is that? Antithrombin 3 blocks abnormal blood clots from forming inside our body. It's a naturally occurring substance. In our body, we have fibrinogen. And when it's converted to fibrin, which is a more, um, let's say, a stable form of clot, this is done with the help of thrombin. So what heparin does is it inhibits this thrombin. APTT is used to measure heparin and the normal range is around 30 to 40 seconds. So this is for a normal individual. But for someone who is taking heparin, the therapeutic range, that is they are on therapy with heparin, the range is around 60 to 80 seconds. Usually the therapeutic range is around 1.5 to 2.5 times the normal range. 
The last thing I want you to know about heparin is that it is safe in pregnancy. Next is warfarin. Imagine warfarin to be a lazy man who loves eating wafers. So loves eating means we are eating something with our mouth. So the route of administration for warfarin is orally. Now let's split the word warfarin. Warfarin. So warfarin is at war with the placenta and it tries to cross it. So wars are not safe. So warfarin is not safe in pregnancy. Wars generally takes place outside the house. So outside means extrinsic. So warfarin acts on the extrinsic pathway. So due to this unhealthy lifestyle of warfarin, the doctor met with him and told him to start being healthy and start taking his vitamins. So this should help you remember that the antidote of warfarin is vitamin K. Vitamin K is used to make proteins or clotting factors needed for blood clotting. Since warfarin is lazy, he hates exercising. So he's always at fight or at war with his personal trainer. So personal start, trainer starts with the letter P and T. This should help you remember that we measure prothrombin levels for warfarin. For a normal individual, the PT level is 11 to 13.5 seconds and the INR is 0.8 to 1.1. But for someone who is using warfarin, the therapeutic level is, INR level is 2 to 3. Unlike heparin, warfarin doesn't immediately go and help someone. Warfarin waits to help, but once warfarin reaches that place, he actually stays there longer. This should help you remember that warfarin takes time to act in our body, but it will stay longer in our body. It takes almost 2 to 4 days for it to act. This is why warfarin is given as a maintenance dose. Few things to look out for while using warfarin is that you should eat green leafy vegetables in moderation, not excess, because vegetables like spinach, broccoli and kale are high in vitamin K. And remember, vitamin K is the antidote for warfarin. It's also best to avoid alcohol as it can mess up with your INR values. In general, when you use anticoagulants, avoid using straight razors for shaving. Instead, you can go for electric razors. This is to avoid bleeding. Avoid contact sports like football and boxing to avoid injuries and thus bleeding. Another thing to note is to avoid medium or hard bristle toothbrush because it can cause gum injuries and again cause bleeding. Instead, you can go for a soft bristle toothbrush. Anticoagulants when taken along with NSAIDs can put you at a risk for bleeding. So consult your physician before consumption. And avoid intramuscular injection as far as possible to avoid hematoma. And hematoma is basically a big bad bruise. I want you guys to remember that clot formation is not always bad. In fact, we need it. Suppose you get hurt, you get a cut in your finger. What happens? It starts bleeding. But after a while, the bleeding stops. Why? Because the body has started clot formation process. Now, if this didn't happen, what will happen? You will bleed to death. Now, we don't want that, do we? I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to keep yourself notified every time I upload a new video. Don't forget to leave a comment and Please feel free to email me in the email given in the description below if you have any doubts. Thank you.